the last one, which is also the longest. Do you think that actor that plays Deagle, though, was dejected when he went to the two towers in theaters? And so that his scene had been cut, and he was like, oh, I'm not going to be in Lord of the Rings anymore. And then he went to see Return of the King. He's like, oh, there I am. And for those of you saying, like, oh, they knew. They knew what movies they're going to be in. Well, tell that to Christopher Lee, because he didn't know he was cut from Return of the King. Or at least not until very late did he know he was cut. Uh, it immediately grabs Smeagol. Precious. It's like watching this in theaters. You have your popcorn. It's like, um, um, uh, a little more popcorn. Why did I get the extra large? <laughs> this was the first Lord of the Rings I saw in theaters. And I saw it in theaters three times. I remember when I was a kid, we had moved to this new town. And one of my best friends, he had moved into the house in the same suburb that were brand new suburbs. They were just being built. There's only like four houses in this entire area where today there's like 200 something, probably more. But they had like the sunflower field in this area that hadn't been, you know, cleared out and set for building houses. There were tall sunflowers, like four or five feet. So what we would do is we would go into that field with like large kitchen knives. We would play Lord of the Rings, like the Battle of Helm's Deep or Pelennor Fields or... Minas Tirith. We'd just be in that field being like, God, God. So you see like two 11 year olds with giant kitchen knives just like out there slashing down sunflower stalks. It was so much fun. I remember going up to my mom and was like, Mom, we're going to go play Lord of the Rings. And she's like, Okay, you can, you can use these knives. <laughs> they weren't steak knives, but they were from those butchers. You know, they were from like the steak knife set that you would get. What? The journey home. Eternal Optimist. Number three, ladies and gentlemen. Almost done. And I'm feeling pretty good, honestly. Not feeling tired or anything. My ears kind of hurt because of, you know, headphones on. And But I think my, my back has gotten used to it for the most part. Every now and again, I'll just lean back like this. And here's a scene that just needed to be in the theatrical. I don't know why they cut it, but Saruman was the villain of the second movie. And then you come into the third, and it's just like, oh, he's locked in his tower. Just leave him there. All right, on to Sauron. There was no closure for Saruman. So this is a for sure scene that needed to be in this movie. You hang from it, Chibit. For the sport of your own crows. We shall have peace. Yeah, get fucked. His attack will come soon. You're all going to die. And now Saruman is a harbinger. Shoot him. Stick him out of his gob. No. <laughs> I thought Legos was like, yeah, I'll just do that. Sounds like a good idea. And the brats roll on the floor with the dogs. Okay, hang on. It's not just the brats that roll on the floor with the dogs. I still roll on the floor with my dog all the time. You gotta play with the dog. I mean, it's fun to play with dogs. Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> now that's a villain death. I imagine they had be being all like, "So, Saruman's dead, Gandalf. But can we, can we go and check on on Grima?" Nah. <laughs> and hey, you know what? While I got your attention, go ahead and give this video a like for the editor. This is going to be a monster to edit and. Just go ahead and give it a like for them. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. I'll take that, my lad. I was going to say a bad joke. Maybe I'm just too far into it. I'm just like, oh, that's a joke I don't need to say. But you've all seen Midsummer, right? If you have, then you, you probably know what the joke was going to be. And if you haven't, then, then just don't worry about it. Your fancy yells, you drink them by the flagon, but the only brew for the brave and true. <laughs> Tippy! But the only brew for the brave and true comes from that green dragon. 
No news of Frodo. No word. So you got no word from Frodo, but can can you not see the future? Can you not predict? Oh yes, on the sixth day, the sun will rise to the east over Frodo, who is this close to Mount Doom. Does that not work? Or can you only see his future? How far can you see in the future? Okay, I want to see if the pupil consistency transferred over to this movie from Two Towers. Smeagol losing his nerve. No? Yep, it did. <laughs> Never ending. Star. Yes. The stars and them. <laughs> I just love the fact that one half of himself is so over the other half of himself and wants him to hurry up. <laughs> The stars have failed. He, Legolas, all right, Legolas actually came out here to throw up because he had too much to drink. And he heard Aragorn coming. He's like, oh, I'll just stand up straight and look wise. Be elvish. I see you. Wee. Imagine Sauron's just, wee. What's going on over here, guys? I gotta pee, gotta pee, gotta pee, gotta pee right now. Ooh, I'm back. Sauron moves to strike the city of Minas Tirith. Beacons of Gondor are lit. Rohan must be ready for war. Follow the river. Look to the black ships. Okay, see, look. He knows about the black ships that are coming. So how does he not know where Frodo is? Does he see the future or does he not? Or can he see things that are happening or can he not? I don't know. Last of the long bottom leaf. I know you've run out. Jesus Christ, you ran out of that entire barrel? You had a barrel to yourself, Pippin. You might have a problem, dude. <laughs> He's like, uh, okay, asshole. Jesus. Oh, tch, wow, okay, you too, asshole. <laughs> this poor guard is getting pushed <laughs> pushed around. Damn, that, that five-year-old can sure shoot a look. There is nothing for you here. Only death. Liar! The crownless again shall be king. Reforge the sword. Again, Lego! Make this into a Lego! I, I, I want it! I want Minas Tirith Lego sets! Please, look at this! Look intricate! Just, oh, I want it! I want it huge! Alright? That's what she said! <laughs> it's a tree. Gandalf. <laughs> yeah, I saw the tree, dude. It's pretty obvious. Lord Denethor is Boromir's father. In fact, it's better if you don't speak at all about Gandalf. <laughs> Gandalf had to remember who he's dealing with. Do you think Denethor ever climbs up those stairs and sits on the actual throne? He just like tells his guard, no disturbances, and he just like, hee 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 hee. Ah. The mightiest man may be slain by one arrow. And Boromir was pierced by many. Just be thankful none of them hit him in the knee. He'd never adventure again. That's why you come to my channel, right? For the decade-old Skyrim jokes. Authority has not given to you to deny the return of the king. He said it. He said it. As three for three title drops. A faint and fading hope that one day it will flower. The king will come. All will answer more. Peter! <laughs> That's actually behind the scenes footage of him directing. That that wasn't planned at all. They just snuck it in. Sauron has yet to reveal his deadliest servant. You've met him before. <laughs> He's yet to reveal his deadliest weapon, but you've met him before. <laughs> I do love the Witch King's introduction though. I don't know if I'd want to risk it, honestly. If they just happen to look up. I mean, they're it's kind of being blocked by that wall, but still, that's, that's risky. But then again, you probably can't wait. <laughs> We've sent scouts to Kier Andros. If the orcs attack from the north, we'll have some warning. Okay, so that picks up where the battle we saw in the last movie. Because they've taken the place across the river and now they're just waiting for them. Because that always bothered me. I never really figured that out. It's pretty obvious, but... Because they were wrapped in battle at the end of the last movie in Osgiliath. And then this movie, they're all just hanging out. But that explains it. They're not coming from the north.
They're sitting there like, oh, we are in so much trouble. And look, I like the detail that they have a little hut right there. It's blowing smoke. I mean, it's pretty small. I don't think it could fit both of those guys, but maybe it's just for heat. It's probably like a, a you know, it's a watch. Like you get one month on and then you're, you're done for rotation for a while. That one, how do you even get up there? <laughs> uh, where are you camping in that one? Okay, they're getting more and more ridiculous. All right, something I always noticed in this is that when Aragon runs past his guard on the right, he slaps his shield. Watch. Bam. <laughs> Don't know why he does it. He's probably like, hey, Frank. Good knuckles for eight. And Rohan will answer. Time for war, motherfuckers. On the third, we ride for Gondor. And war. <laughs> When I would see my friend in the hallway, the same friend I went to see these movies with when I was in like middle school, I'd see him in the hallway in school and I'd be like, hey, on the third, we ride for Gondor and war. And he'd be like, dude, shut the fuck up, dude. We're at school. People are going to think we're nerds. It's just like, come on. Lord of the Rings. Everybody loved Lord of the Rings. I even had a replica ring back then, too. I would wear it around my neck at school. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure it fell off on the bus ride home or something. Because it just was gone. And then we called the bus depot and they didn't find it. So somebody probably found it and was like, oh, it's fucking awesome. Legolas, why are your eyes brown right now? Aren't they supposed to be blue? Shout out to Bernard Hill, by the way. He's the only actor to appear in two movies that won 11 Oscars. The most any movie's ever won. Return of the King and Titanic. He was the captain in Titanic. Just a nice little connecting tissue between Return of the King and Titanic. And he dies in both movies. Oh, spoiler for people that haven't seen Titanic. The city is lost. Tell the men to break cover. We ride for minutes today. I don't remember this character's name. I don't know if it's even ever said in the movie, but he was in Two Towers as well, working with Faramir. And he was always really nice to Faramir. <laughs> <sighs> Your eye is like pussing, dude. You need to wipe that off or some shit. <laughs> Dude, you got problems. Well, you know, he's a grieving parent, I guess. Yeah, I guess waiting probably would have taken too much time because you could still see the army pouring out of Minas Morgul. The fat one will take it from you. <sighs> what of the wizard? I will break him. There's another setup that was in the theatrical, but the payoff wasn't in the theatrical. It's only in the extended of the Witch King and Gandalf having their little, I guess, fight or face-off anyway. I'm going to reheat some pizza. Pizza reheated. Do you guys want to know a pro tip for reheating pizza? Put a glass of water in there. It'll help reflate them or add moisture in it. And you get better looking pizza. It works, so there you go. If you didn't know, pro tip, put a glass of water in the microwave with your pizza off to the side. All right, back to the movie. You wish now that our places have been exchanged. That I had died and Boromir had lived. Yes. God, it's such a shit thing to say to your son, dude. Like, whatever your grief, you should not treat your only child, well, your only child left, like that. Famer is a good dude, too. <sighs> Crumbs on his jackets. <sighs> I mean, I hate it as much as everyone because it's just like, come on, Frodo, you should know better. Sam's a good dude, but he's just tired and the ring is just messing with him. And he can relate a lot to, to Gollum. That thing around your neck. And of course, this doesn't help. Go home. <sighs> Poor Sam, man. 
In all honesty, Ian McKellen got the Oscar nom in the first movie. Andy Serkis should have gotten it in the second movie, and Sean Essen should have gotten it in the third movie. I'm just saying. Because Sam is fucking phenomenal in this movie. Also, I'm fairly sure those were the Hobbit children that we saw in the first movie. I'm pretty sure they're Peter Jackson's kid, if I remember. I'm about to point out something you're never going to unsee. Look at that horse freaking out. <laughs> it's going... Look at that. <laughs> yeah. You will now never unsee that. Denethor is eating, and I'm here stuffing my face. I guess I'm Denethor now. But I know how to wipe my mouth. None of this song can be played because of copyright, but just know, I love it. As gross as some people find it, I do find the enjoyment of that kind of storytelling. You know they're dead, and instead of showing them just being massacred, a single blood drop goes down his face. That tells you all what you need to know. Every hour lost hastens Gondor's defeat. We have till dawn, then we must ride. And again, his oath to Boromir. He needs to get to that city. He needs to save it. He promised him. On his deathbed, he promised him. War is the province of men, Ewan. <laughs> the eye twitch, the bitch. What'd you say? Arwen's life is now tied to the fate of the ring. Hey, Elrond, how, how did that happen anyway? Like, how did she get tied to the fate of the ring? I don't know. Seems legit. <laughs> I want to get that sword. Or, I want to get a replica of that sword. Hanging on the wall. I just love how it just keeps going. You think it's going to end soon? Just nope, 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 nope. Become who you are born to be. I cannot give you what you seek. But you looked at me longingly when you rode off to fight the wargs in the last movie. We're going with you, laddie. <laughs> That's like a sitcom shot where it's like, oh, you guys. Where's he going? Did he not tell anyone what he was doing? Seems kind of dickish. Maybe you should at least tell Theoden. Hey, man, I'm going to go get that instant win button. I'll, uh, BRB. I would have you smile again. Theoden, no! Don't tell a woman to smile. It's 2022, dude. You're going to get canceled, bro. <laughs> Come on, I... It's such an easy joke. I had to. I never really knew how I felt about the ghost army, you know? On one hand, it's really cool, and, you know, they needed it or else the good guys wouldn't win. But on the other hand, it's like... It's like an ex machina, in a way. It pretty much comes out of nowhere. You know, and they just happen to set up camp on the same mountain that they're dwelling in. I mean, I'm not a... I don't know all about the lore. Maybe in the books it was referenced or something. But it just seems so. It just seems so out of the blue. And there's 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 other cat. She's trying to get on her cat tree, which is right there. Can she make it? Let's find out. Are you... Here, I'll help you. There you go. There you go. Good girl. <laughs> She's still too young to try the jump. Little hobbits do not belong in war, Master Meriado. Then why did you make me a squire and say I could come if you're just going to kick me out at the end? It's such a little cock tease. Ride with me. This might be a hot take, I don't know, but I always liked Eowyn more than Arwen. Maybe not as a romantic for Aragorn, but if I had to choose one, I'm going with Eowyn. She's a badass. And here we are, the big battle of the movie, and it only took us two hours to get there. I don't know if I ever said this, but... I love long movies. I love them. These epics that take three to four hours to get through, I love them because I want to stay entranced in this world for as long as I can. That's what movies are. They're distractions from the real world, you know? You leave your world and you're in another one of mystical fantasy or magical or science fiction worlds. Stay there as long as possible. Make long movies, epic movies. I'm all about it. That's probably why I'm such an avid binge watcher of things. I, I'll go through a season of anime in one night. I do not care. I'll wait for it to be finished and then binge it. 
<laughs> it's so relatable. Tell me you wouldn't do this if you were in that situation and this started happening to you. I tell you, I might have to invest in new headphones or at least different headphones if I decide to do another in one sitting. Because, man, these are getting snug over my ear and starting to get a bit sore. <laughs> I've seen so many people call out legless for trying that, but it's just a way to show the audience that not nothing's gonna work against them. Except <laughs> the Sword of the King. Though there is a cut coming up that I think the theatrical has a better version of, honestly. What say you? Yeah, because I prefer the theatrical version of this scene where it ends where he says, What say you? Though it's hard to decide, honestly, because if you just went with the theatrical version, you wouldn't get the skull avalanche coming up. That skull landing was actually filmed after Return of the King had already won the Oscar for Best Picture. After it swept the Oscars, they went and filmed that to add to the extended edition. They were still filming this movie, and it already won all the awards. I think that's so funny. Okay, and that's what I'm talking about. In the theatrical, it cuts right when he says, what say you? And you don't see them again for like 45 minutes. So you don't really know what's going on until they show up. And it's just like, oh, fuck. Instead of the extended where they actually tell you what their answer was and how they're going to get there. And as soon as you see those ships in the extended, you know, oh, that's Aragorn. So, you know, I prefer the theatrical for that. At least for first time watching, anyway. Release the prisoners! Catapult! Uh, this, is, this is just... Oh, this is awesome. They catapulted their fallen <laughs> allies' heads in. That's brutal as fuck, dude. He's alive. Wow, look how scary that is. And you can see them all. Look how scary that is. That's intimidating. Game of Thrones. Battle of Winterfell. Though I would love if like a parody movie came out where they show an army over like a wall and they like they're they're in a formation that says like you're fucked or something <laughs> Send these foul beasts into the abyss Those are the ones you want the stones that hit and roll squish as much as possible Oh here comes my favorite like piece of music So cool now this is just cheating right here, honestly. This is fucking hacks. Like during summer when I had the house to myself, I would take like my toy sword, you know, plastic toy sword, and I'd like arrange the pillows around the couches so it's like pretend to be orcs and whatnot. And I just pretend I'm in this battle. <laughs> like I had the movie on in the background. I'm just like, ah, oh. you know, like stabbing my fake sword into like the pillows and like slicing them. <laughs> I would just do that for hours. It was just so much fun to me to pretend I was in this battle. Look at the orc in the background just going down the line of archers and hitting them in the back with a hammer. Oh, dude, your nose. Wipe your nose, man. And there's the end to part one of Return of the Kings, which means we only have one part left of this marathon. Ah, damn. We're in the home stretch. Everyone. Peter! No! <laughs> you went full circle and you died in the end. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I shouldn't have thrown away best boy, Frodo. This scene was in the theatrical as well, but I also think it's unnecessary to even have it. Because he's like, wait a minute. I didn't eat this. God damn it. I didn't eat it. God damn that golem! He tricked me! <laughs> <sighs> I do not like spiders. I'm getting a little bit of the, you know, the Ghiblis. But I think it's big enough to the point where it's not really bothering me all too much. <laughs> I mean, I still don't like it. But if you want to see reaction to how I normally would react to a spider, Go watch my jackass video. Mm -mm. No, no. I don't like I don't like spiders. Oh, oh, get it out, get it out. I don't like that. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. 
I don't like it. Precious Master's Oh yeah, I I said earlier that Sauron probably named the ring Precious. God, that feels so long ago. This video is going to be incredibly long. And incredibly hard to get around the copyright, I imagine, because Lord of the Rings is is a magnet for that stuff. So if there's any weird editing, like speeding up or changing the pitch of the the voices, that's probably why. The editor had no choice. And I trust the editor. Say in the comments how much you love the editor for this, because I can imagine it's going to be insane to edit. I'm sure he's dead. Gondor is lost. There is no hope for men. <laughs> No matter what comes through that gate, you will stand your ground. Ah, fuck. Hot take time. Spiders are proof that God doesn't exist. I mean, just look at them. They're me that many eyes, their legs, how they move. Like, the way they eat, it's just, uh, it's just like, nah. Nah. <laughs> a God wouldn't create such a thing. Uh, well, maybe a sick and twisted one would. He will not touch him again. I don't know where I got this from, but when Sam said, you will not touch him again, I always thought that she reached down and like hit him again with her leg. I don't know where I got that from, but it's, that's always been in my head. So I'm always shocked when it doesn't happen in the actual movie. Sam is a legend. Sam is a fucking legend. Look at this thing. Yeah. Get its fucking eye. Fuck you. When you get to hell, tell him Samwise Gamgee sent you. Dad. I legit thought he said dad. He's saying dead. I know that now. But when I first saw it, I was like, dad, what? What? That's a revelation. This fellow ain't dead. And here's the payoff to that earlier setup. The payoff that wasn't in the theatrical cut, but the setup was. Unlike Two Towers, where the payoff was in, but not the setup. And that's why he doesn't have a staff the rest of the movie. And here comes one of the best scenes in the history of cinema. The ride of the Rohirrim. Death! I can't be so loud because it's, it's very early in the morning. Mm, that violin. It can't be played. It can't be played, but the violin's going off right now. That horse is freaking out, running into the other horse. You'll never unsee it. Ha ha ha. God, I love Mary in this, just screaming death still. Charging to your death, really, but you're gonna fight anyway. It's fucking awesome. God, I see me pumped. Puppet Mary. You'll never unsee that either. <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of losing my mind. I've been at this for over 10 hours now, you know, so... Whew. Probably see other cat trying to get on the desk right here. Do you want to get up? Here we go. There you go. Do you want to say hi to the audience real quick? You're not gonna say anything. Are you still? Are you still afraid? You still camera shy? Okay, you just want to be put down. All right. I'm just trying to get more clicks and subscribers here. Oh no, you're leaving. All right, fine. <laughs> losing my mind. I'm losing my mind. Oh! I mean, if you're gonna go out, you might as well go out in style, all right? Yeah, no fear. It's not the best strategy, of course. You're gonna get mulled over, but no fear. Just do whatever you can. Ha, <laughs> Puppet Mary again. That's just unfair. <laughs> See, this is war. This is a war zone. You go, Mary. The two people that weren't supposed to be here that everyone thought would be a hindrance. You're kicking ass. White shores. Uh, the subtle little rising of Into the West in the background, too. I will kill you if you touch him. <laughs> You killed my dragon thing. Yeah, fuck that shit, man. Fucking giant ass mace. 
you probably just shattered her arm, even though she blocked it with the shield. It's just, nah, that thing, solid cast iron, probably. Ugh. Instant win button. Whatever, some people think that diminishes her victory. Mary's help, but nah. I am no man. See? She's the only one that could have killed them regardless. 16! 16! Do those not all count? It's like the ladder thing from Helm's Deep. Do those not count for Legolas? And I've seen some people be like, oh, you didn't need to kill the Oliphant, but those things are trained to kill. They're stomping around and killing people. So yeah, probably did really need to get put down. That still only counts as one! <laughs> That's still such a great line. And just like that, the Battle of Pelennor Fields is over. I shall not now feel ashamed. How he acted during Helm's Deep really weighed on him then, but he gave it his all for Minas Tirith. Oh, you can see some of the Mumikil running off. <laughs> they look so weird. I never noticed those before. <laughs> Be it. He needs to wake her up. He's because he needs to ask her. He's like, did you just kill the fucking witch king? That's so fucking cool. Is it too late to change my answer? Will you take me back? You killed the fucking witch king. <laughs> yeah, Faramir, you earned it. You put up a lot of shit, and you're very brave. In fact, I, you've both earned your peace. <laughs> the scum tried to knife me. Kill it. We know there's distension between orcs and urukai. But do you think there's like racism between the orcs? Like we've seen green orcs, we've seen red ones, blue ones, gray ones. Do you think there's like a hierarchy? I imagine there's probably racism about that amongst orcs. <laughs> there's four orcs on the stairs and we saw one turn around and run away. And I thought I could hear the clinkling of chains. I guess that was him, he went up the stairs and around. Maybe you can see the mithril vest in his in in the edit. They took the ring. And I love the detail in Frodo's neck, how it's wearing the ring, something so heavy, just cuts into your neck like that, corrupts it, or tears apart your neck. And even Sam, who's like pure good, who's optimistic and everything. It's hard for him to give up the ring. And he's only had it for a couple of hours, maybe. It goes to show the ring's nothing to fuck with. We did it, Mr. Frodo. We made it to Mordor. Frodo has passed beyond my sight. So can he see Frodo or can he not? Draw out Sauron's armies, then march on the Black Gate. Hello, who's there? Oh, hey, Aragorn. Okay, Uno reverse card, bitch. His goal was to, you know, tempt Sauron. He did that, but Sauron ain't no fool. Oh, he's still got so long to go, and it's in the worst part. Super hot, fucking poisonous air. Ugh, ugh. Aragorn passes that hill that Sam got stuck in, and is like, a hobbit was stuck here. And another. <laughs> look at his neck, look how red it is. I mean, the ring is super close to being destroyed, so it's probably just like yanking him down. There'll be none left for the return journey. I don't think there will be a return journey, Mr. Fertile. <sighs> I just praised him for his optimism, but now he's at that point. I don't think there's gonna be a return journey, but we gotta do this. Let's do it. Fucking accepting your death, really. Let the Lord of the Black Land come forth! Blue eyes, blue eyes again. Another thing that definitely should have been left in the final product, honestly. Mouth of Sauron and Saruman's death are the two things that needed to be in the theatrical version. I know why it was cut. Because the mouth taunting the fellowship with the mithril vest doesn't have the same impact as it does in the book. Because we know that Frodo's alive.
But in the book, you hadn't gotten to their story yet, I don't think. I still think it's good for the characters themselves. Elvish play. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> That's a decapitation in all three movies. Someone give these boys some chapstick. That's all I can think about when I watch this scene. Just that, mmm, just, they're just peeling, just peeling. I bid you stand! Man of the West! Yeah! Wait, hang on. Yeah! I just had a paper towel, paper towel holder from the pizza I ate earlier. It was empty, so now it's a sword. Ah. Yeah. It's like you're so close, but so far you're crawling and the ring is out. You can just imagine that ring is just pulling him down. Like, no, get down. Nah, -uh. get, come on, get down here. What color is Legolas' eyes going to be this time? Put your guesses down below. If you guess blue, then you were right. <laughs> Oh my God, best scene. Best scene coming up. I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you. Come on. <sighs> Fuck yes, Sam. God, I love it. I love it so fucking much. Oh God, crying, I'm crying. I've cried a lot in the most recent videos. Everything everywhere, Stranger Things. And now this one too, it's just like, God, it's such a great moment, such a powerful moment. I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you. For Frodo. I mean, it's such a brave call, the for Frodo, because for Frodo works if he's alive or dead. If he's alive, we'll give him that chance. And it works even better if they think Frodo's dead because the world's doomed anyway. Let's go out swinging. I can multi-layers. I love it. Legolas had to get the first kill right there. He shot an arrow first before Aragorn could reach that. He's like, nah, I get the first kill in this battle. Yeah, there's so much going on. There's so much going on. I'm having the best time. You didn't think it would be that easy, did you? And he broke his word. He swore on the ring. The ring heard that. The ring's not gonna be happy with you. Hey, look, there's a creek right behind Frodo. Why is there some water and snow in Mount Doom, huh? I wonder. You'll never unsee that one either. <laughs> yeah. The eagles! The eagles are coming! And thus, every person on the internet was all like, well, why didn't the eagles just fly them in? Well, if the eagles tried to fly them in with tens of thousands of orcs out there, I'm pretty sure Arrow... Also, I mean, I think in lore, it's the eagles are like the Ents. They don't want to get involved in the worlds of... Like men and elves and orcs and all this stuff. Like it's not their problem. You know, they're convinced and whatnot in the end, but yeah. Just let it go! No, fuck off, Elsa. We're not doing that. The ring is mine. God damn. Talk about tripping at the finish line, you know? I mean, talk about a climax of a movie, am I right? Or am I right? And there you have it. The pity of Bilbo, all those years ago, saves the world. Because if Gollum wasn't there, Frodo wouldn't have destroyed the ring. I don't think anybody can willingly actually destroy the ring. I think that's the point of it. It took an accident. And even in the books, I think Gollum just slips while he's dancing. Such a good story. Such a well-rounded story. It's just... Mwah. I wonder if there's a fan edit of this movie that just shows, like, the other members of the Fellowship's journey. Like, it doesn't show Frodo or Sam at all. They just know what the Fellowship knows. So when the ring gets destroyed, it's a shock to the viewer as it is to the Fellowship, you know? It's just like, holy fuck, he did it. He was alive. He destroyed the ring. That'd be interesting. Now look at his neck. Uh, it's just like, it looks so chafed, you know? Well, movie's over. Guess I can stand up now and... Uh, uh, okay. Aw, oh, shucks. Also, look at that. Gandalf brought three eagles. So one for Frodo, Sam, and maybe Gollum. 
Maybe he was expecting Gollum to survive too. He brought an eagle for him just in case. If Smeagol survived, would the elves grant him a trip to the Grey Havens like they do for Frodo and Bilbo? <laughs> this is such like a sappy, like happy go lucky ending, you know? Just like everyone's back together, we're all laughing, we're all smiling, everyone's reunited. <laughs> I don't care. I love it. I'm having such a great time. I'm looking at how long I've been recording. <laughs> but in this chair, watching these movies back to back. and I might just be going insane. I don't know. Well, I guess the Fellowship's all united. They had their happy, smiley ending. I guess I can get... Okay, this... I guess there's another ending. <laughs> how long before this joke starts getting old? Shut up, editor. Now come the days of the king. And look at the tree. The tree's fully in bloom. Oh, and look at the horizon where Mordor used to be. It's completely blue skies. I actually hope Faramir and Aragorn become, like, best friends. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe he'll go live in Rohan with uh, Eowyn. Since she's going to be, like, the queen. <laughs> he just went for it, too. Open mouth and everything. My friends, you bow to no one. <sighs> I've seen this movie countless times and it's just getting me emotional. <sighs> oh god. I just love this movie. <laughs> it'll it'll always get me. <sighs> we were home. This feels so weird, honestly. Just watching this all back to back to back is such a strange experience. I didn't take breaks. I didn't get up from this chair. I wheeled my chair away to go to the bathroom and he reheat pizza and get food and stuff, but I don't know. I feel like I've been on a large journey with them. Like, I thought I'd have to stop and change out the SD card or change the lights or something, but no, it's just been all the way through. I can't. I'll get to it in the conclusion. <laughs> yeah, you face down a giant, big-ass spider, bro. You have nothing to fear with talking to a woman. Hell yeah, Sam. You deserve it. You deserve it. How do you pick up the threads of an old life? How do you go on? I will say, as far as like a change of like lifestyle, that's kind of how it feels going from being in the military and just living that life and doing the things you got to do in there to being out takes an adjustment period it felt so weird getting out of the military like i don't know i just expected any moment like well i gotta wake up tomorrow and go back i mean of course i can't relate to what they have been through and i can't relate to what a lot of other military people have been through it's all been different experiences for everyone but it's a very similar feeling of i don't know how to describe it any chance of seeing that old ring of mine again? I'm afraid I lost it. Here, take mine. Actually, you better not. Um, it's... It might... It's, it's just... You probably shouldn't. It is time, Rhoda. Hmm. Just like the bond of brotherhood that they may can never be broken. You don't see those bonds in movies anymore. I don't like seeing Sam's cry face. <laughs> it hurts my soul a little bit. There's that little bit of Frodo from the beginning of the first film there. Just a light, warm smile. God, he's so good at like that transition. That's He was so lighthearted and free-spirited in the first one. Maybe not free-spirited, but you know what I'm trying to say. And then he got more serious and... Didn't smile as much, and then that's that looked like Frodo from the first movie, the beginning of the first movie. He's at peace. I'm back. God, remember how I started off this reaction talking about those doors? That feels like a lifetime ago. The end. We did it. <laughs> oh, free the ears. Oh, let's go ahead and stand up. Okay. Oh. 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 Oh, God. Oh. 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 Oh.
That felt weird, standing up. I, I got, my leg wasn't asleep, but I got like pins and needles that shot up when I stood up. It was, that was weird. Wow. <laughs> that, that was an adventure for sure. I'd recommend people sit down and watch all three of them as a marathon. I think it's a very unique and interesting way to do it. Um, maybe not in one sitting. <laughs> maybe get up and move your legs around and stuff. Once I got into it, it just, it went by. It went by, and I just had so much fun. These movies are so good. I thought I'd be exhausted and be like, oh, well, that's it. That's, that's the, I could subscribe. No, I just, I got more into it as the movies went along. I was surprised I cried. Because I did, I cried. I'm, oh, by the way, I still have to bring on. It's a weird feeling, honestly, to watch all three of them like that. As if they were like pretty much as if pretty much as if they were one big movie because it's a weird experience. Things that only happened a few hours ago for me feel like it they happened a long time ago. Honestly, I know some people are probably wondering if anyone's even made it to this point in the video. Um, what would be my pick? Like, how would I rank the Lord of the Rings trilogy? First of all, I love these movies. They're ten out of tens in my book. All of them, ten out of tens. From favorite to least favorite, I guess, would be three, one, two. I know a lot of people prefer Towers over Fellowship, but I just love the beginning and ending of a story. <laughs> Best film trilogy ever made by a country mile. Sorry, fight me, Star Wars fans. I love Star Wars too, but it doesn't, it doesn't stack up to Lord of the Rings. What do you guys think? Should I do another one? What other series would you like me to do an in one sitting for? Let me know down in the comments. And of course, go ahead and give this video a like just for the editor's sanity, I suppose. And a subscribe just for both of us, the editor and I. Try this at home sometime. Let me know how it goes for you. That's it. We're done. <laughs> oh. Ugh. My precious. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. That sucks. <laughs> I'm losing my mind.